What is going on guys? Welcome back. In today's video we're going to discuss a Python statement that is not used so often and not so well known, which is the else statement after a full loop. So let us get right into it. Alright, so maybe you've seen some code samples online already where you have a full loop in Python, something is being processed, something is being done. And then after the full loop, you see an else block that belongs to that full loop. So not to another if block, it belongs to the full loop itself. And you have been wondering what the functionality is behind that syntax. So what does it mean to append else after a full loop or to a full loop? And this is what we're going to talk about in this video today. And we're going to get started with a simple example right away. So we're going to say we have a list of items or maybe let's call this numbers and we're going to have just a bunch of uh, random numbers 18 14 29 uh, 22 109 uh, 178 44 15 36 for example and let's say that our goal is now to go through that list and find uh, or check if there is a value that is divisible by five. And if yes, we want to print it and we want to stop looking. So for example, we would say 18 is not divisible, 14 not, 29 not, and so on until we get to 15. Then we found one and then we can stop looking. So we're not going to look at 36 anymore and also not on any other values that could be afterwards. So if I have something like 99, 103 or something, it would not look at those values because it already found 15. So we could do something like four number in numbers, if the number modulo five is equal to zero. So if it's divisible by five, we print found a number. And then we can say that the number we need to make this an F string. So F and then the string PyCharm does this automatically number is divisible by five. And otherwise what we want to do is we want to just print that the respective number is not divisible by five. And in the case that the number is divisible by five, we want to stop looking. So what we do is we break out of the loop. So the break statement for those of you uh, who don't remember the break statement breaks out of the loop. So normally the loop would just go through all the numbers and then it would continue with the rest of the code. So here rest of code. Um, but if we break out of the loop, it breaks out of the loop prematurely. So we don't have to go through all the numbers and we can continue with the rest of the code right away. Um, now let's say though, we want to print a special message if uh, we did not find a number divisible by five. So if I run this right now, you can see we have it's not divisible by five, not divisible by five, and then found a number 15 is divisible by five. Now let's say 15 is not in the list. Let's say we have 18 here once more, then you can see it just prints for all the numbers that are not divisible by five. That's quite simple. Now let's say though, I want to print at the end of this loop, the statement um, print no number divisible by five was found. Now, how could I do that? Because in this case, it would be printed every time. So even if there is 15, it would print no number is divisible by five. Um, what I could do is I could say found equals false. And then if I find one, I can say found equals true. And then I can say if found or if not found, I could print that message. That would be one way to do it. So right now, since there is 15 in it, it won't print the message. But if I change 15 to 16, it will say no number divisible by five was found. That's how you would do it with a helper variable. What you can also do now, and this is what the statement is about, you can also just append an else block to the for loop itself, like here. And you could say print no number divisible by five was found. And the idea here is that this else block will always be executed if the loop just um, if, if we break out of the loop, if we don't break out of the loop. So if we if the loop finishes the iterations without us breaking out manually from the loop. So if we, for example, if I change this to 18 again, we will never reach the break statement because it will always say that the number is not divisible by five. So the loop will stop eventually, but it will stop naturally without a break, a break statement because there is no number divisible by five. And this is why we get into the else branch. So the else branch is always reached when the loop just naturally finishes all the iterations without us breaking out of the loop. That's the basic idea. And this can be quite useful um, in certain scenarios like this one here, for example, where you just want to 
uh, print an extra message. And of course, this is all just syntactic sugar, you can do it um, without it as well. So you don't have to do it like that. You can also do it with the variable or you can do it with some special if statements. But that is a very readable way and a very simple way. It doesn't require, oh, by the way, I can delete this. It doesn't require any um, special variables that we need to keep track of. We can just say, do whatever you want to do. In this case, break out of the loop. And if you don't break out of the loop, then print this once you're finished. So that's quite useful in certain cases. That's quite readable in certain cases. Um, and I want to show you one more example here, I want to show you how we can do that with multi threading. So for example, we can say import threading, import time. And we can say, for example, that we have a function, we're going to call it end loop. And all we want to do here is we want to have a global variable done. And done is going to be equal to false. And then here, we're going to say that global done, and then we're going to say done equals true. But in between those two statements, we're going to say input, press enter to terminate loop. And then backslash n. So that is going to be our prompt. And when we press enter, we're going to set done to true. And then what we want to do is we want to say threading dot threat the target is going to be end loop. We want to start this and then we want to say for I in range 10. For example, we want to say print the number. And then if done, break out of the loop. Otherwise, just sleep one second and repeat the process until we have no more values. And what we can do here now is we can append an else block and say print loop completed without any manual interruption. And then maybe you want to do something based on that, right? So in, in your program, you might want to have a certain behavior that uh, is triggered when the loop completes without interruption or the other way around. So we can run this now you can see I'm not doing anything. And if I just press enter now, it's going to break the loop. So it only counts to four. However, if I leave this running up until nine, so zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, it's going to terminate because it doesn't have any numbers to process anymore. And it's going to in addition to that print the message loop completed without any manual interruption, because um, yeah, the loop terminated or finished completed without any interruption. And this is what the else statement after a full loop is for. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.